YouTube, welcome to What The Math. Today I'm taking a look at another game in education, specifically for math this time, and I'm really, really happy to have found a game that is actually super useful in a math class that you can totally use in your class to help students understand functions. Now this game is called Sign Writer. It has been developed by one person, someone who has been inspired by many hours of graphing on TI-86 calculator. Kind of looks like this. This is actually screenshots from the game that show you what the game is like. Uh, it's available on every single possible platform that you can imagine. Uh, you can also play it in a browser, which is what I'm gonna do because you can uh, essentially, if you have Chromebooks or something, you can even play this in a browser without downloading it. Or you can play this in Windows or uh, Linux or OS, uh, OS X, which is Mac. Uh, let's try this in the browser. I'm going to open this right now and show you what game is like. Chrome cannot run this app. If this happens to you, what do you do? Of course, you need to download something called Unity Web Player. Now, Unity Web Player is a demand is a demanding plugin, but you need this for uh, several um, applications that use 3D graphics, specifically this game. So, uh, download it and it'll look like this. Or obviously, if it doesn't work in your browser, you can always just download the game. It's only 18 megabytes and then play it. So this is what it looks like. Essentially here, when you click the play button, you will start hitting the slopes, as they say. Essentially, you create these um, graphical or functional shaped um, slopes for the sign writer, for this little guy and a little girl on the sled to go through various areas. Now, this is actually the introduction in the game. It's pretty awesome, I think. It's, it's been developed really, really nicely. It shows you what this game can do. Now, I'm going to skip this and just show you what the gameplay is like and why it's so, so cool and why it's so interesting. So here on top, you can actually go, uh, if you go on top right here, you will have either tutorials or you can just go ahead and start right away by specific topics. Now, for a math teacher, this is magic. So, for example, if I want to learn how to, or obviously you can also create your own levels, which is something that I would totally use as an assessment with my students. I would actually ask them to create, um, you know, specific uh, levels in this game where, uh, like I just say, we'll learn quadratic functions where they can actually practice quadratic functions using this game. So let's actually, before we get too far ahead, let's look at how the game plays. So for example, here's the tutorial for parabolas. Um, this is a parabola, it takes the form of y equals x squared. It teaches you how to write this in this particular uh, form as well. Parabolas can also be moved. So if you click on play, it shows you that your character moves this way and bound he here and she falls on their head. Now your job is to actually hit this box and you, not only do you have to hit it, but specifically for this box, you have to stay in it for three seconds. So this game has a bit of a puzzle element. Now for this tutorial, it actually lets you do it easier, easier by moving your parabola. This is in uh, vertex form. If you remember your parabolas, uh, by moving your parabola vertex sideways. So let's, oh, I need to stop this first. Let's move this to the right and see, we can't actually go that far, I think. Yeah, it, it just gives you an idea of how to move this, but you can't move it this far. You actually have to do this manually. And to do this manually, we're gonna choose this and change it to x equals minus three. Not good enough. x equals to minus five, minus four, minus four, I think. So it, it doesn't give you enough hints to, um, to basically give you a solution, but it does give you enough hints to find the solution yourself. Now, if I click on play, and here we go with parabolas, and as soon as my player stops in here for three seconds, I win this level. Ta-da, complete, 10 characters. 10 characters, what does it mean? Anyway, uh, it took me 8.7 seconds, so you can have a little bit of a competition here as well, where you can actually have your students compete. And it's, uh, the entire tutorial, like, essentially goes through all of the parabola functions. Now, it has so many different functions, though. It's not just parabolas. It starts with simple linear functions, which is, you know, slopes. So this is a linear function where it teaches you, this is how the linear function works. You're going the wrong way. You have to go the other way to hit all these boxes. So what we have to do is we have to change this to negative x. This is where you talk about slopes and positive and negative slopes, but I do it in a very, very fun way, very interactive way using a game that is very accessible to all students. And essentially, a goal for every mission is to either hit the boxes, um, like this one here, basically hit the boxes by changing your function to make it so that your player passes by the boxes, or to stay in a box for a certain period of time like we just saw in the previous example. So we have slopes, we have parabolas, we have sine functions, waves, sine and cosine functions. So this is, uh, I think it's grade 10 trigonometry 
for American curriculum or possibly grade 9, 10 for more international curriculum. Uh, we have something called Time. Now, this is this is a new addition. This is like more extreme version of this game where it introduces a variable of time where essentially things change with time. So this is for like more complex, I guess, assessment or projects where you want to you want students to explore the idea of time and you want them to create different puzzles using time. So here I changed my time to go up the scale. Uh, and I guess you could also use this in things like physics where you actually, um, you do have a lot of graphs that have like something versus time, right? For example, uh, distance or, uh, versus time. So here, this is the way of introducing this kind of uh, idea in a more friendly way. Then of course we have polar coordinates and this is really, really extreme. So here we go. So if I click on play now, oh, what T represents time? I'm doing something wrong here. What am I doing wrong? Uh, change it to a number? Doesn't do anything. I don't actually know how to play this one. I may need to learn this myself from scratch. Okay. Yeah, that one is more difficult. This is like some extreme stuff here. So polar polar, polar coordinates, I'm not actually sure how it works, but you can see how complex this game gets. And I'm sorry for not knowing what this exactly this is, but I'm sure uh, someone out there knows what this is. And there's other stuff here as well, like, uh, things that have no categories, there's something called convergence, which I don't even know what that is. Um, something that's out of order, I guess that these are just missions that... Oh no, never mind, this is actually things that we have to think outside the box, because you have to solve this by hitting this first and then hitting that. So you have to actually change this function by yourself using all the knowledge that you have. Like for example, I can change this to minus x first, and then I can add another function. That's not gonna work, is it? That is not gonna work. I can possibly make it. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. This is, see, this is actually, this gets really hard. So here, I don't even know how to approach this, but this is where you can, if you are um, in a school where, you know, you have a lot of inquiry-based learning or you wanna try to have inquiry-based learning, for things like functions, grade nine, 10 algebra, this is awesome. Like you can have students explore different functions, have them write functions in here manually, and um, for schools that are IB schools, this is super important because a lot of the assessments starting in 2015, 2016 is going to be on computers. Yeah, the students will have to actually type their functions. So this is really important for them to be able to do manually. So very, very important skill to have. Uh, so yeah, I don't know how to solve this. If you know how to solve this, post it in the description below. Uh, do try this yourself because this is a super awesome game. It has some really hard missions. Um, if you actually look this up online, if you read the forums for this particular game, some uh, missions that people have made and some solutions are ridiculously hard. Like this would have like functions that are so crazy complicated that I don't even know where to start. It does have a lot of levels actually. This, this is not the only levels that it has. There's quite a lot of different custom levels that have already been pre-made and are available for free. And by the way, did I mention that this game is absolutely free? There's absolutely nothing you have to pay for it. And this is probably the only game, the only mathematical game that I've tried and have enjoyed so far. There are chemistry games I've tried and have enjoyed. There are physics games. There are lots of biology games. There's not a single math game that I've liked so far. This right here is it. This is the only puzzle game that is brilliant. And it's actually apl applicable to high school. It's applicable to you know, higher grade students, not just lower grade students. This, this, there's some really nice uh, earlier learner, like elementary school math games out of there. And I've already looked at them before, but for higher grades there's almost nothing. And this is it. Now I wanna see uh, if I can actually find something else that is awesome that I haven't seen yet and show it to you as well. And I forgot to mention, so if you wanna go through specific levels, so if you click on the left side right here, so parabolas, and then you click on the right side, it will actually give you different levels you can choose. So for every single one of these, there's actually quite a lot of, there's like practice levels here where you can try to, you know, try different, different difficult questions. Uh, then we have like same thing for time and things like that. Um, there's concepts like asymptotes, there's, uh, there's concepts like space and time, Oh, that is awesome. That is just, that is just trippy. And so this game is just awesome and brilliant in every way. Um, if you are thinking of using this in your class and you want to try something inquiry based, uh, and you have like, for example, IB curriculum, this would be perfect. So for example, what you can do is you can actually assign these as individual, 
um, criterion B invest pattern investigation ass assessments, and specifically these practice problems. These practice problems are actually kind of hard, and it's difficult to solve them. And so your students can solve them individually and then give you their solutions in written format, so you can then check them, uh, or possibly even just take a screenshot and show you uh, show you the solutions that way. Um, the interesting thing about this is that there is no one solution to any of these problems. There's always multiple solutions, which is absolutely perfect. It makes ma math interactive, it makes math unique, and it gives you um, a really awesome, fun way of teaching um, teaching math, specifically to teaching functions, which, which is usually not particularly well received with students, I think. Now, let me just try, for fun, let's try to solve this. We know this is a sine function, so let's let's do this inquiry-based learning together. So let's see what we can do here. So uh, we know it's a sine function, so let's start with a sine of x. Nope. Sine of x, proper format. All right, so sine of x. So uh, the sine function I have right now is a little bit too fast. We need to decrease the, need to decrease the frequency. Let's do maybe divide by five, six. Six looks good. Now we also need to increase its amplitude. So we need to, this is where you can talk about the amplitudes of sine and cosine functions to increase the, you know, the ups and downness of this function. How do we do this? So you can obviously have students discover this by themselves. And this is something that I would do in my class before I teach them how to do this. Uh, or you can show it to them and then they can play around with it. And while they're exploring, they may actually come up with, uh, with some crazy functions, like for example, this one. And you can actually talk about what this is and talk about the idea of asymptotes and stuff. So if someone like accidentally types something wrong and they have this, there's, there's so many opportunities to discuss this as a topic. So anyway, let's actually solve this. And as I keep changing these variables, you can see I'm sort of getting a little bit closer to that specific shape that I need to create. And this is what you want your students to do. You want them to explore these uh, particular variable. So what does it do if you change this value, which is sometimes called H, sometimes called K, in different countries is actually a different um, value for it. What happens if you change the A? Usually this is A in every country. Uh, so what happens? What happens to your function? And this is a, such a good way of exploring these. So let's actually, let's actually solve this. Stop talking and solve this. Okay, so it's looking better and better. Let's actually see what happens if I click on play right now, because these balls I think will roll downhill and I need to spend, oh no, I can't reach the thing. All right. But I reached the balls. All right, so cool. Uh, now, w the only thing I need to change is essentially move this up a little bit. So you can do this by doing the following. Excellent. That looks perfect. And solution. Excellent. So that is one of the ways of solving this problem. There's so many other ways you can do this. You could have moved uh, shapes differently. You could have created a cosine function. You could have created so many different things. Uh, but essentially, this is what the game is like in a nutshell. I absolutely love this. Whoever made this deserves a Nobel Prize. Maybe, okay, maybe that's going too far, but deserves a prize of some kind because they totally uh, surprise me there. I did not expect this game at all. I randomly found out about it very recently and I'm happy it exists. Anyway, thank you for watching. This has been What the Math with Sign Writer, the epic epicness of math education. Game you later, guys, and bye-bye.